He's one of the most polarizing pros in this era of Rocket League. His haters, of which there are many, call him disrespectful, immature, lacking in skill, low IQ, pretty much any negative trait you can think of, he's been called it in the last year. On the other hand, his admirers and fans would call him a god and a savage, capable of inflicting mass emotional damage to fans around the world. He's enjoyed a decent amount of success in RLCS this year, even achieving a Rocket League world record. Yet at the same time, he's managed to drum up a staggering amount of hate from the community. So what did he do to garner so much hate? In a game as competitive and serious as toy car soccer, he must have done something pretty terrible to get the wholesome and fun-loving Rocket League community in a raging tizzy. I don't care who thinks I'm good or if I am good. He did two things, actually. And one of them has to do with that world record I mentioned. This is the story of how a guy named Calm became the most hated pro in Rocket League history. By far. Version 1 entered Rocket League in August of 2020 with a roster of AXB, Gimmick, and Torment. Gimmick and Torment were fresh off the old C9 roster with Squishy, who had just left to NRG. 2020 was a tough year for the new org, and they pretty much sucked. And to be honest, they kind of sucked in 2021 too. But in January of 2022, they made a change that would propel the team to the top of North American Rocket League. Gimmick was replaced by Beast Mode, who would then go on to become one of the top five players in the world. With the new roster of Beast Mode, Torment, and Calm, the team immediately started getting better results, even winning an RLCS Regional. But to stay on top in Rocket League, you have to constantly adapt and evolve your approach. Not just your playstyle, but also your mentality. And so next spring, a new approach from V1 manifested itself in ways that made enemies for Calm. A lot of enemies. Version 1 qualified for the Spring Split Major in London as the third seed from North America. The format for this major was absolutely insane. A massive 16-team double elimination bracket spanning five days. The first part taking place in a closed studio environment. No crowd until the last two days of the event. Version 1's first matchup of the tournament was against Endpoint, which in hindsight definitely influenced how easily Calm was able to make everyone hate him. Endpoint's roster had seen a decent amount of success up to this point, winning multiple RLCS regionals and even representing EU as the number one seed in the Fall Major. The team was popular and well-liked, with young stars Archie, Relating Wave, and the beloved Metzenaris. One of the best moments in Metzenaris' career was in RLCS Season 5 in 2018 at the Copperbox Arena in London, when the crowd stopped his onstage interview to show him some love. Now jump forward almost exactly four years, and we're back at the Copper Box Arena for this 2022 Spring Major. Metzenaris is fighting for a chance to get through the bracket to day three so he could reappear on the stage in front of his adoring London fans once again. Fans attending the Major in a few days were no doubt rooting for Endpoint to win and make it to the crowd days, reuniting with a legend. That was all ruined by Calm. His own career with his two teammates as well, that's gonna be to the back. Pulls Actually, Calm. all of version one. Beast Mode by this point had firmly established himself as an elite superstar, and Torment complemented the younger players perfectly, as V1 was cruising through this series. But while Beast Mode and Torment simply played the game, Calm took it a little further. On the broadcast, you can see Calm yelling after goals, but you can't really make out super clearly what he's saying. However, on Rizzo's watch party stream, it came through a little clearer. <laughs> Trash talking in competitive Rocket League is not at all a new thing. For years, players have taken jabs at each other here and there, and usually it was pretty funny. The most egregious thing at a land that I can think of is Rettles jumping up on the table at DreamHack when they beat G2. A and that was funny, but recently the intensity has flared up a bit, spawning controversy amongst the community. Back in the Fall Major in Sweden, players had begun to yell at each other across their gaming desks. Sometimes they would just yell really loud when they scored, and sometimes they would make R2-D2 noises. Some pros thought the yelling was fine, and some did not. Well, fast forward to present day, and we have Calm screaming at Endpoint, telling them that they suck, and asking Relating Wave, what are you doing? This was a new level of trash talk to a community whose most controversial figure is a pro who stood on a desk once. That's toxic. Oh, that is toxic. <laughs> a lot of people argued this was pretty normal in-game trash talk, and others called it bullying and verbal abuse. European fans in particular did not take the disrespect well. And Psyonix wasn't thrilled about the cursing so loudly on stream either. Be loud and not curse. Be quiet. All right. All right. 
right. I'll be loud. Not a sure chance, and off the kickoff. Definitely a oh. great chance, and it's going to be calm to drive it home again. I'm an older dude, 35 years old. Calm for me is coming across as childishly immature and extremely off-putting. In the vernacular of the day, it is cringe behavior. This is exactly why more people should be doing what Calm is doing. If he can make a 35-year-old dude write an essay on him, imagine how his opponents feel. Oh, He's pointing at him. <laughs> That's tough as well. Instantly stood up. He's sitting there like, where's the defense? <laughs> what are they doing? Why did nobody do anything? And Beast Mode's gonna close it out in three. End point, can't even muster one. V1 cruised through the bracket, beating the eventual tournament champions Moist to make it to the first crowd day of the major. And when that day did come, the perception for Calm was not a warm one. Got a lot on the pitch, beast mode. A 1.43 goals per game in the two- How would Calm and the rest of the V1 roster react to an entire arena full of fans booing them and cheering for their opponent, Carming Corp? An org from a huge EU content creator. Bob high into the midfield. Come. Well, it turns out they didn't really uh -oh, care. Boost to play a beast uh -oh. mode. Double tap! Oh! And he opens the score sheet for Virgin One. This turned out to be an epic series that came down to the wire. And listen to the differences in the crowd as momentum swung back and forth between these two teams. That's a nice bounce back to the middle. Oh, Is there any way back? It no. looks like a foot race. Wait a minute. No, what? it's another wide open goal, but this time it's going to V1. Big collapse for V1. Astral and Itachi both dive at the uh, same ball, and that's with a version one victory in game six. The series was headed to game seven, Just a couple of where we find both teams locked two to two with ten seconds remaining. Left, version one trying to get out. Astral being harassed. Clear out. Dolly decides to keep the play open. Beast mode towards net. Beast oh, mode! Oh, what? Oh, a thriller at the copper box. Beast mode in zero seconds. What? Oh, a stunner. Oh, it's he pumped. can't. What? Come on, where are you at? Where's the defense? Where did they go? Oh, oh my goodness. man. Boy, has he turned into a villain here at the Copper Box. Oh, boy. <laughs> and they let him have it, but it's version one on top in game seven. Tom, listen, you clearly have a lot of fans in the building. What do you got to say to them? I mean, honestly, I could barely hear it when I was on there. I don't think they're quite loud enough. Tom had solidified himself as a massive villain for a growing number of people. As for the booze, well, it actually seemed to feed Calm. But then V1 came up against the Falcons. They fell to the lower bracket, and then were revenge swept by the eventual champions, Moist Esports. The crowd felt that their villain had come to justice, and the hate for Calm seemed to die down for a little bit. But it didn't last long, as Com's next move enraged an even more volatile group of fans. The booing, Reddit threads, and death threats would seem like nothing compared to the monolith that Com faced next. Fast forward four months and we find ourselves at the NA Fall Cup. This was pretty recent, just a month ago. The inevitable clash between version one and NRG was almost too perfect. A mix of old teammates and squishy versus torment, plus some polarizing approaches to the game itself. NRG represents the old elite, three of the most legendary players in the game at a tumultuous time in their careers with regressing results and growing frustrations, while Calm and version one represented a younger, more aggressive style, loud and in your face compared to the reserved and composed NRG squad. In fact, Squishy himself was one of the pros that spoke out against the onstage trash talk before it got to the point where it is now. And that wasn't the only issue NRG have had with Calm. Calm has tweeted multiple times in the past about certain teams not taking scrimmages seriously, and the rock of the community ran with the rumor that it was NRG trolling scrims. This isn't really fair to NRG since it's just a rumor that was never confirmed or denied, other than Justin saying it wasn't NRG this time in Calm's second tweet. Now, the reason this is relevant is because the entire rumor revolved around the idea that NRG would get tilted or upset from demos. True or not, the theory does add some context to what you're about to witness. Because what Calm did to NRG on the field that day was pure, unprecedented demolition madness. In one of the most insane RLCS matches ever, Calm racked up demos at a rate that no one had ever seen before. 
I can't really describe how frustrating this has to be for NRG, who after a couple splits of poor results are desperate to regain, and have finally made it back to the semifinals of an event, only to run into an absolute maniac who is literally spawn killing their entire team non-stop, and it's working. Here in Game 3 is where you can really see the NRG players unraveling, and for good reason. With a late demo goal, version 1 sent the game into overtime, and that's where things got really crazy. With Calm continuing to savagely harass their team, the NRG fans in the Twitch chat went nuts. I have never seen anything like this while watching RLCS. It was absolute mayhem. Use it. Come to shoot the squishy to save. Come again on a demo. That must be 10 in this game. V1 so far have averaged 8.5 in the series per game. I am confident that Com has got more than that on his own. One thing's for certain, and Com is demoing more than anyone that you have seen four minutes in this overtime. It was four minutes in demo. Second last overtime. Com. Trying to keep it around the same. Demo. More demos coming out from Tom. Beastbo joining the party. The version one half. Demo. But now we see it break out. Another demo from Tom. Tom, he's going to try to get Garrett on three. Spawn. After exactly seven minutes, version one finally put energy out of their misery and ended this monstrosity of a game. And the look on these players' faces just says it all. When the dust had settled, Com had ended the game with 20 demos, a Rocket League record. Version 1 won the next two games, and it was even more painful for the Twitch chat, as the player they had just called no skilled and only good at demos scored this goal on them. They have ended up winning that game. Com gets pre-jumped by Gary! But at last, huh? the series was over. The NRG fan base was humiliated, as their heroes had fallen to a no skill demo troll. While the European fan base had to sit there and watch one of their favorite players get told he sucks at Rocket League by a loud 19-year-old, the NRG fans had to go through something worse, getting beat by demos in RLCS. At long last, NRG and EU fans could come together in their shared hatred for a single player. Com had brought together two large and distinct groups of fans by making them both really mad. He turned an otherwise pretty placid pro dynamic into something a little more interesting and fired up fans to root for their favorite teams all the harder, even if it was against him. So whether you love him or you hate him, you have to at least give him credit for figuring out the fastest way to become the most hated pro in Rocket League history. I'm Sonless Khan. Thanks for watching.